in this video we are going to discuss about system structure of database management system or system structure of database system here this is the diagram this is the system structure of the dbms here we can divide this diagram into mainly four parts the first part specifies database users the second part specifies query processor the third part specifies storage processor fourth part specifies disk storage that is hard disk okay first let us see about database users mainly we have four types of users are there the first type of users is naive users the second type of users application programmers third type of users sophisticated users fourth one database administrators now let us see about first one naive users naive users are nothing but web users uh, if you take uh, the example of google pay or phone pay we uses the application we uses google pay and phone pay but we don't know how it is actually implemented so if you take the example of a bank in bank we will have some cash counters so cash counter employees are nothing but naive users why because they don't know how it is internally implemented simply they uses that application interface that graphical user interface so that is nothing but naive users so google pay users phone pay users or any web application users when we are working with uh, when we are using a bank when we are working with some bank application or uh, some bank application employees so all those are nothing but uh, naive users naive users can also be called as web users we can use the web we can use the app but we don't know how it is internally implemented so those sort of users are na called as naive users now let us see the next one application here we have use naive users uses application interfaces application interfaces are nothing but uh, graphical user interface diagrams graphical user interfaces so with the help of that uh, we can deposit the money or we can transfer the money from uh, one account to another account uh, through online okay so naive users uses application interfaces graphical user interfaces now let's see about application programmers application programmers write application programs so application programmers write application programs in order to interact with database application programmers are nothing but software employees they uses the languages such as c c++ c sharp java in order to write the application programs in order to interact with the database if you take java java employees uses jdbc java database connectivity in order to write the application programs so application programmers means software uh, employees okay now let us see the third one that is sophisticated users sophisticated users can also be called as analyst so sophisticated users uses query tools they don't write any programs they uses query tools they uses online analytical processing query tools we have olap tools online analytical processing tools data mining tools uh, we have several tools are there so by using the, those tools they will write the queries and the corresponding queries will be submitted to the query processor so sophisticated users are also very very important uh, users so sophisticated users are nothing but analyst so in order to perform the analysis these users are mainly useful so they will analyze so what are the sales in uh, east region in uh, west region so for that purpose they will use the various tools we have various data mining tools are there so they will use those tools in order to perform the analyzation so for that purpose they will write the queries for an analysis purpose and those queries will be submitted to the query processor now so sophisticated users also use use query tools okay navy users use application interfaces 
where he has application programmers write application programs, where he has sophisticated users use query tools. And the next type of users is database administrators. Database administrators uses various administrator tools. Uh, database administrators are mainly useful in order to create the databases. They will grant the permissions for the each and every user. So they will grant the permissions for application programmers and sophisticated users. So application programmers can access only few databases. Sophisticated users can also access few databases. Those permissions will be given by the database administrator. Okay. So this is about the first part that is various database users. Now let us see the second part. The second part is query processor. Query processor mainly contains uh, five components. DDL interpreter. DDL stands for data definition language. DDL commands are create, alter, drop. And DML compiler. DML stands for data modification language. We have insert, delete, update. Next, linker, <laughs> query evaluation engine. And application program object code. Application program object code. Application program object code, linker, query evaluation engine, DML compiler, DDL interpreter. So these are the important components of the query processor. Query processor accepts the query from the sophisticated user and translate that uh, uh, DML query into instructions in such a way that the storage manager can understand. So it simply translates the DML query into low level instructions. So those instructions will be understood by the next, next one that is storage manager. So first let us see about DDL interpreter. So here DDL interpreter interprets uh, the commands which are written by the database administrator and it will store that schema in data dictionary, data dictionary. Data dictionary mainly contains schema. That means the database, uh, the database information, the database internal structure. So that structure information will be stored in the data dictionary. So for that purpose, DDL interpreter is useful. Here, what is the major task of database administrator? Database administrator mainly writes uh, DDL schemas, DDL commands. So DDL interpreter simply interprets those schema structures and stores them in data dictionary okay now let us see about dml query dml query i'm sorry dml compiler so dml compiler accepts the query written by the sophisticated user and simply translates that query statement into low level instruction in such a way that query evaluation engine understand so dml query dml compiler simply accepts DML query statement and translates that DML query statement into a low level instruction in such a way that query evaluation engine understand. So for that purpose DML compiler takes the help of linker also. We know about linker. Linker simply links the object code files. So for compilation purpose it, it will take the help of linker also. Okay. Next, query evaluation engine accepts the low level instructions and executes them so that application program object code will be generated. So query evaluation engine executes low level instructions so that application program object code will be generated. So this is about query processor. So query processor accepts DML query and generates the object code. Okay. And the next one is next part is what? Storage manager. Storage manager simply acts as an interface between query processor and disk storage. We know that disk storage contains the database, the corresponding data, whereas query processor contains the queries. So storage manager acts as an interface between this database and the queries. Storage manager is mainly responsible for storing the data, retrieving the data and updating the data. So for storing, retrieving and updating the data, uh, updating the data, all those are nothing but uh, uh, the, the responsibilities of the storage manager. 
So storage manager for that it will mainly take the help of four components. Storage manager mainly contains four components. The first component is authorization and integrity manager. The second component is transaction manager. Third component is file manager. Fourth component is buffer manager. First let us see about authorization and integrity manager. So we know that we will enforce several integrity constraints on the database tables. Uh, if you take the example of date of birth, date of birth can never be future date. If you take the example of a rule number, rule number must be unique. So we will enforce all those uh, integrity constraints. Okay, If those integrity constraints are satisfied, then only authorization will be given to the user for accessing the data. Suppose if, if, the, if, the, if user entered details are uh, uh, not satisfying those constraints, then authorization will not be granted to the user. So authorization will be granted to the user only when these constraints, integrity constraints are satisfied. Now let us see about transaction manager. If system fails, then, all, then, also, then also the database has to produce the correct results. So database has to be consistent even the system fails. So that is the main duty of the transaction manager. So in uh, during system failure also, the database system has to produce a consistent result, correct result. Let we have two bank accounts, A and B. Let person A has 5,000 rupees of money. Let person B, in, in, in person B account also, 5,000 money is there. Let person A transferred this 5,000 money from bank A to from his account to B account. Then after that, what is the amount? Person A, 5000 will be deducted. So 0. And what is person B amount? 10,000. So during system failure also, the DBMA system has to produce the correct results. Okay. So that is the role of a transaction manager. Now let us see about file manager. So file manager means uh, file system. We know that the file system means it is the duty of the operating system. So file manager allocates the space for the files on hard disk. So file manager stores the files in the data files. So data files mainly contains database information. So who will store that information? File manager. So who is file manager? File manager is nothing but operating system. So it is the duty of the operating system in order to allocate some space for the database. So for that purpose, file manager is useful okay in order to store the database in data file so data file contains uh, database information okay next we have buffer manager buffer manager is mainly useful in order to retrieve data from hard disk and the data will be transferred to the main memory and from main memory uh, some most frequently used instructions are to be transferred to the cache memory why? Because we know that uh, CPU can't access uh, disk, hard disk. CPU can execute the data if it is available in either main memory or cache memory. But the size of the cache memory is very, very small. So operating system retrieves, uh, here operating system means buffer manager. Buffer manager is also part of operating system. So buffer manager retrieves data from hard disk and transfer the data to the main memory. And if there are some frequently used instructions in that program, those instructions will be transferred to the cache memory. So all these things will be done by the buffer manager. Okay. Next one is disk manager. So disk manager contains data files. Data files contains database information. And here we have indices. By using indices, we can access the data in a faster manner. Indices contain some key values. So with the help of that, we can access the data in a faster manner. Okay. So for that purpose, data files uses indices in order to access the data in a faster manner. Okay. Next, we have data dictionary. Data dictionary mainly contains metadata, data about the data. It mainly contains database schema information. Okay. So this is about uh, system structure of uh, database management system.